Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week was an incredibly light news week. Basically nothing happened. In Dragonflight news, we saw the internal Dragonflight alpha hit the Blizzard catalog, which basically means that a public-facing alpha might be coming soon. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really mean much of anything in terms of timing except for the fact that things are moving, which is good. Based on past gaps between internal alphas hitting catalog and public alphas starting, we could expect a public facing alpha within the next like three to six weeks, maybe. But I try to never really get my hopes up because it makes it much harder to disappoint me. With a distinct lack of new things to cover in WoW this week, I wanted to highlight two of the big components towards how I am keeping myself busy in Shadowlands right now. The first one is an add-on spotlight, and this is how I have managed to get back into mission tables and to make them make me a reasonable amount of gold. Uh, effectively, here's the add-on, it's called TLDR Missions, and what it does is it has this button to turn in all of your completed missions for you, and then it has this other button that can put together mission table teams for you, and then even send them out once they're ready. It'll run simulations, it'll figure out who should go on what mission, you can have it prioritize various things from the mission table, maybe you just want pet charms, maybe you just want gold. Um, I have mine getting myself anima to kind of keep them all sustainable because I actually do this on eight characters, nine characters, something like that, nine and counting. I'm leveling up more characters so that I can have their mission tables running with this add-on because it takes about, it takes longer for the loading screens to log in on a character than it takes to send out missions on them. And it's basically Warlords of Drainer all over again. Mission tables are something that is not coming back in Dragonflight. So I am celebrating their end in Shadowlands to basically print as much gold as I can with them. It's realistically the only good thing to do with excess anima outside of like buying mounts and transmogs, and I already have all the mounts. So this is a great way to convert all that excess anima to gold materials and pet charms. Even if you end up running out of anima on your alts to send missions with, you can just send them more from your main if you have it by buying those anima caches from the vendor by the flight path in Oribos. And if you have anima that's not doing anything right now, then you may as well. The only thing that would really stop this scheme is if your character is frequently switching covenants, because every time you switch covenants, all of your active mission table missions get canned. So it won't work so much if you're if you're hopping back and forth between covenants for like farming versus raid versus PvP versus mythic plus. But if you have plenty of alts that you're happy to just park in one covenant and have at it, I say have at it. That brings me to the second thing that I want to highlight, and I've talked about this before, but it's gonna be new to somebody. This is a fan site called Simple Armory. So you can look up your character, and what it's gonna do is basically break down your collections into a very easy to read format, showing you what you have and what you're missing, broken out by category and expansion. Simple Armory was mostly known for their Mount Planner feature, where you can enable this checkbox to see what route you should take and what sort of teleports you should take to kind of optimally farm mounts on one character. But I mostly just like using it to check and see what collectibles I'm missing from recent content. It is very satisfying to fill out the whole row from a section, and it's easy to remember mounts that you forgot were even in Shadowlands when you see them all laid out in a grid like this. So that is Simple Armory. I will link both TLDR missions and Simple Armory in the description down below. And those between the two of them have been keeping me pretty busy uh, with gold making as well as mountain pet farming. I am currently determined to force the Gilded Waiter pet into existing. It's that golden crane pet that has a very low chance to drop from Bastion Treasures. And I'm just gonna keep throwing my alts at it until it gives up. I got time. And then in my life this week, what happened? I adopted some sourdough starter from my mother and it and I have begun a long and hopefully beautiful journey together. I realize that I'm about two years late to the sourdough trend, but Bread's not going out of style, at least not, not with me in my house. And then my little balcony garden's doing some stuff. I had a pair of green bean plants that were like racing each other up a trellis Mario Party style. And then the left one won. And it's now like whipping around at the top of the, of the stake, trying to figure out where it should vine next. And I should probably give it something to climb. I didn't really realize that beans can grow so quickly sometimes that they start to feel more like an animal than a plant. And questions from this week, Akilha wants to know, in your opinion, what are the easiest mythic plus affixes to run and push keys on? So it is always going to depend a little bit on your group comp because some members of a group might make something easier. For example, if you have raging, but you also have a boomkin that is a very nice boomkin that likes to soothe often, uh, raging isn't going to be as dangerous, for example. 
Uh, so it depends a little bit on group comp and a little bit on the specific key, but there's always going to be some affixes that are just generally better than others. Um, I want to say volcanic and quaking are both really good ones because they can be effectively completely negated just by basic gameplay. And most people pushing high keys should have a handle on the level of gameplay needed to not take excessive damage from quaking and volcanic. And even if you get hit by a volcano, it's not going to really ruin your life. I would also say that bursting is a pretty good one. It's fairly reasonable post nerf, especially if you happen to have a priest handy to mass dispel it off if it gets bad. Necrotic would be fine if it didn't make all of the friendly neighborhood tanks suddenly have like vacations and birthdays and fish christenings and stuff that they have to go do that week because I don't think it makes life very fun for tanks. And then Muggles Cake Sniffer wants to know, are you naturally curly or did you get a perm? If so, what color rods did you use? Different colors or different sizes? I did not know that. I am lucky or unlucky, depending on the perspective, but it comes out of my head this way. I have always had naturally ringlet curly hair and I have been wearing it curly lately. Also, I got, oh no, I told you guys about the scrunchies already. Nobody, <laughs> somebody cares about the scrunchies. I bought them at the, I got more at the farmer's market. This one's got polka dots on it. I'm 29. I, uh, I'm embracing default hair for the time being. I'm not saying I'll never change it again, but it's been kind of fun to have a, an era that is just me the way that I happen to be already because it it's less work and it's more me, you know? I'm not trying to copy any particular person or aesthetic or like, you know, trend. I'm just kind of doing me. And that's a very comfortable thing to do because nobody can tell me that I'm doing it wrong. And then Fire Devin wants to know, what are a few things you're most anticipating for Dragonflight? For me, I'm looking forward to the new crafting system and the ability to craft gear for people, along with having crafting set gear with its own perks. Yeah, the crafting set gear I'm really, I'm really jazzed about. I just, I want like my own special artisanal herbalism hoe for my druid to carry around, despite the fact that she picks flowers as a bird with talons. But that's not what I was going to say. I am most excited for right now the talent revamp and specifically I really want to level alts with the new talent system and kind of start out with like no abilities and then as you level being able to pick and choose where I want to put points and what I want to be working towards. I think it'll be a pretty good way to learn a new class at your own pace and also just sort of make everything hopefully a little cleaner to play at endgame. I know the trees looked a little overwhelming at first but I am holding out hope that it's an overall cleaner and a system that's easier to come to grips with than the the mess of interlocking systems we have now. And that's been the week. They can't all be bangers, but I had a nice time. Thank you all very much for watching. Appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.